Hi, welcome back. In this review, we will be looking at another budget robot vacuum, the EDK650. And this model is their mid-level alternative between the K600 and the K700. It's the cheapest robot vacuum I've tested with Wi-Fi connectivity and a smartphone app, which provides users with better accessibility to the robot. I put this product through a series of tasks with navigation, cleaning performance, and more, which I'll share later on in this video. Full disclaimer, I got this robot for free to test, but as you've seen in my other reviews, I base my findings on test results to be as objective as possible, showing both the good and bad points. First, let's go through the features. The K650 is EED's middle option between the K600 and K700. This option has 2000 pascals of suction, 500 more than the entry level K600. Another upgrade is the Wi-Fi connectivity and smartphone app so it doesn't come with a remote since all the functionality is in the app. However, it retains the random navigation of the K600. Only the higher-end K700 has smart navigation with a top-mounted camera sensor, dual gyroscopes, and optical flow sensor. Of the three models, only the K700 has the mopping attachment. The K650 unit I got does not have any water tank, so it only has one function. This robot comes in a predominantly white finish with black accents around the sides. Before using, you'll have to move the power switch to the on position, which also turns on the Wi-Fi, then scan the QR code located here to download the app. You'll need a router to connect the robot and app, but the process takes less than 5 minutes. The interface is simple, with only one button, since all the features are accessible through the app. Underneath, there are two side brushes. These are color-coded and clip on the base, so there's no need for a screwdriver to attach. You'll get two interchangeable brush rolls, a combo, and an old rubber brush. I've tested both, and there isn't much of a difference between the two at the brief pickup. So for me, I'd stick with a standard brush for convenience sake. Behind the main brush is a rubber seal to ensure debris are funneled into the suction chamber. The dustbin loads from the back and holds up to 800 milliliters of dirt. One feature I like is how easy it is to dispose of dirt with its top-mounted door. There's lots of open space, making it less messy. It has three filtration levels, a HEPA filter, sponge, and a thin mesh to block larger clumps of dust and hair from sticking on the outer layers. The dustbin and sponge filter are washable, but the HEPA filter is not. Airflow is decent with up to 13.74 CFM at the highest power setting, which is more than an entry-level Roomba that ranges between 8 and 9 CFM. It has enough for cleaning surface debris from small particles of dirt like dust, sand, quinoa, coffee to large stuff like Cheerios. Passes were clean, though not as clean as a Roomba, but it's quite decent for a robot vacuum at this price bracket, especially for picking up surface dirt. One factor that limits its potential is the narrow brush roll, which is less than 6 inches wide. Another issue is the twin side brush scattering debris around. I've encountered this issue several times, and it's most noticeable on hard floors. It's one reason why it didn't do as well in the sand on hard floor test where it picked up an average of 90.46%, though it did better when I used a spot cleaning versus the standard mode. Please note that this is only an issue when you clean large quantities of dirt. For daily cleaning tasks on dust, it shouldn't be an issue, but I feel the need to mention it just in case you'll have to clean a big mess. It's also decent in deep cleaning tasks, picking up an average of 66.52%, a few notches below the Roomba 675 and E5 but only a few percentage points behind the more expensive Roborock E5. It's decent for a cheap robot vacuum, but not something I'd recommend for homes with lots of carpet. The K650 can resist hair tangles to a degree. I did several tests on 5 and 7 inch strands of hair, then weighed the hair inside a dustbin and on a brush. Here are the results. The standard brush did better, picking up 47 and 39% respectively in the 5 and 7 inch test. The all rubber brush was decent with the 5 inch strands, but not so good with the longer 7 inch hair. One surprise, at least for me, is how well the K650 cleaned the edges. It picked up most of the coffee grounds I scattered in this area, picking up a big chunk after the first go around. The app also provides users an edge cleaning option where the robot will only clean this area, so it's an additional option when the need arises. The K650 has a standard algorithm, so it only pinballs around. I tested coverage by scattering Quaker Oats around the room and it picked up most of it at the 13 minute mark. As a comparison, I did the same test on the Roomba E5 and it took around 22 minutes but it still left a patch of dirt in this area. 
so coverage is pretty efficient at least for smaller rooms. It's also good at avoiding obstacles. In this overhead shot, you'll see that the alcohol dispenser and water bottle barely moved as a robot turned and avoided it when it detected these objects. It has good climbability, going over this rug measuring 0.8 inches tall. I also tested it on this MDF board measuring 0.7 inches thick and it went over it without any issues. One advantage cheaper robot vacuums have over more expensive, lighter based robots is their lower profile design. This robot measures just a little over 3 inches tall, so it fits under our sofa with a 3.5 inch clearance, something not possible with any of the lighter based robots I've tested so far. At its lower power modes, this robot is quiet, producing only 58.1 and 59.6 decibels. In the two higher settings, it's louder with 64.9 and 66.9 decibels respectively. The K650 will run for up to 130 minutes in the standard power setting, 10 minutes longer than the K600. Lastly for this review, we'll look at the app. It has some features you don't normally see in a budget robot vacuum, which I'll highlight here. The main interface provides access to three cleaning modes, Edge, Auto, and Spot. Edge engages the Edge cleaning mode where the robot only cleans the edges. Auto is the default where it goes in a random direction until the battery reaches a certain level, then tries to find home base. Spot engages the spot cleaning mode where the robot spirals in a small area. Users can select between four power levels, quiet, standard, max, and max plus. The standard setting is usable on hard floors, while the max and max plus are more suitable on carpet. However, it lacks a carpet boost feature, so you'll have to manually select the correct mode for transitions. It has a do not disturb feature where the robot will not run at your preferred time frame. Unlimited scheduling is also available which means you can schedule unlimited runs per day. It's the cheapest robot vacuum I've tested so far with this feature available. Cleaning log shows the details of the previous cleaning cycles including the area size and the duration of the run. Accessories usage provides a heads up to users when to change components like the filter, side brush, and main brush. To conclude this review, the EDK650 is an excellent value for money alternative for folks looking for a cheap robot vacuum. Cleaning performance is decent on hard floors and carpet, but there are limitations on how well it cleans embedded sand plus the side brush scattering large clumps of dirt. The ED app is perhaps the most feature rich I've tested so far with robot vacuums in this category, with the ability to schedule unlimited runs. If this video has been helpful to you, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I publish new reviews like this. Links are in the description below for more information. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.